We're in Springfield as the Senators host the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders. SEPQ Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships starts now. Watching Sefkew Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. Good evening and welcome to Sefkew Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. Paul Wapple alongside Adam Anderson. We're at Memorial Stadium in Springfield as the Senators host the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders in a Central State Eight Conference matchup. Adam, we have a good night for football. Uh, maybe a little windy. Away. Yeah, no, no rain though. I think both coaches are are going to be happy with that. But maybe a little bit windy. But I think we're going to have a big Central State Eight matchup here tonight. Springfield highs four and zero. Oh, Quincy Notre Dame three and one. What do you see as the keys to tonight's game? Seth, is your key to getting a new home loan. Uh, first off, for Quincy Notre Dame, this is a road test for them. They've played four games this year, haven't left the greater Quincy area. So uh, great scheduling for their athletic director. But you took a step up in the competition by joining the Central State Eight. They're the smallest school in the conference. They're going to take on a a really good Springfield High team. So it is going to be a test for them here tonight. And then for Springfield High, you have to prove it. First time they've been 4-0 since two, uh, 2010, I believe. Um, you, you've played really good competition, but now these next few weeks you're going to take an even bigger step up. This is a chance to maybe share a Central State 8 title, something I don't know the last time that happened. Big game tonight, week five of the high school football season, hard to believe. Our sideline reporter tonight, Spencer Davis, ABC News Channel 20. We'll check in with him right now. He has the Brandt Professional Agriculture Field Conditions. Spencer? Yeah, thanks, guys. It's an all-turf field down here, so it's not going to be a problem in terms of if it's too slippery or wet. And anyway, even though it rained a lot of the day, all that wind has cooled it all off. But the forecast called for a lot higher winds, and we're not seeing that right now, at least, on the field. I would say maybe maybe five miles an hour. It's pretty calm right now, but, you know, it could pick up. We'll have more information as the game goes on. But for now, back to you. Thanks, Spencer. We'll be back with the SEPQ Friday Night Rivals kickoff from Springfield in just a minute. Dealerships, Paul Wapple, Adam Anderson, Spencer Davis, and the entire Sefkew Friday Night Rivals crew ready for opening kickoff here at Memorial Stadium in Springfield. The 4-0 Springfield Senators, first time they've started 4-0 since 2010 against 3-1 Quincy Notre Dame, a Central State 8 matchup. Sounds a little strange, maybe. It does sound strange because we could even go a step further and say it's a Central State 8 West <laughs> matchup. Uh, the conference splitting into two now that Quincy Notre Dame is a part of the, the CS8. So uh, a lot of firsts here. Their, their first game at Memorial Stadium, their, their first road game this year as well, and uh, second game technically in the Central State 8, but... Uh, it's going to be a big matchup here tonight. And a win for Springfield High could, could make them playoff eligible just like that. But uh, they've got a tall order tonight. Quincy Notre Dame really put it to Sacred Heart Griffin last week, 37-7 in Quincy. Yeah, it was an impressive win. Uh, going back and watching that game, um, a lot of turnovers for both teams. And uh, Sacred Heart Griffin did not take advantage of those opportunities that Quincy gave them. But Quincy definitely capitalized on the mistakes that uh, SHG had made. So... Uh, it's a very good football team. Quincy Notre Dame has the distinction of being one of the first four-win teams to make the playoffs. Last year they were four and five, made the playoffs, actually made it into the second round uh, before losing to Nashville in a tight one, and Nashville lost to Athens to go to state. So um, and they are a smaller school, and, and that's something that I don't know if a lot of people realize. And the Senators, 3-6 and six last year, really have turned things around. We talked on the pregame show about Brody Sheffler, the junior quarterback for Springfield High. Boy, he's really looked good through their first four games. Uh, two interceptions, uh, nine touchdown passes. Yeah. He, he, there were flashes of brilliance last year as a sophomore, and you knew he was going to figure it out. He's a great athlete, but him taking care of the football better this year is what's winning them uh, these, these games in, in uh, impressive fashion as well. Ben Corey, number 88, will kick for the Senators. As we start this game, the Raiders will receive the kickoff. 
Yeah, like Spencer Davis said, no rain, a uh, little bit of wind. We'll see if it picks up. Could get some gust of 30, 40 miles an hour. We'll see how that goes. Springfield High's normal kicker over in Moline at a soccer term. He's a, a two-way fall athlete. And that is tonight's kickoff brought to you by Bridge Care Suites. And it's a touchback. So the Raiders will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Both of these teams have good offenses, Adam. Yep, and I think the key in this game for both is can they protect their quarterback and can their uh, defensive line m make some disruptions in the backfield, throw off some handoff timings, maybe get a few sacks. I think that is going to be a key for both uh, the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders and for the Springfield Senators. Quincy Notre Dame has a big offensive line, and we'll see how they do. They mixed it up last week. Got a big game. We talked about that against SHG. And as we mentioned, their first road game, even though it's week five. On first down from the gun. Back to throw, complete. Still fighting is number 17 there, Gavin Dolman. Had a big game last week. Yeah, he's a big target out there for Hunter Shuckman, their quarterback at 6'3", almost 200 pounds, and he's got the afterburners too, so they have to watch him in the open field. Always like to get six yards on the first on first down. That's great. Trips left for Quincy Notre Dame. Shuckman from the gun again. Man in motion. Shuckman to throw. Does complete. 25. Trips up. Ball. Ball's loose. loose. Quincy Notre Dame recovers with the 28. So the reception was good. And luckily, number 17, Gavin Dolman, was there to save the day. Take a look at the replay. To Oliver Triplett, uh, he took a big hit as he was trying to reach for that first down. Great play by the Senators. Triplett with 130 yards, receiving last week. Rushing, check that. So now third and two after the catch and fumble. Dolman wide left. Handoff this time, first time of the game. Quincy Notre Dame says they have it. First down, we will see. A lot of black jerseys are saying he's a little short. It's going to be where they mark it. He's going to be behind. I think it's going to be fourth and eight inches there. So the Senators D comes up big there. Yeah, great job up just front by the, the Senators defense. Just short. So punt situation for QND here in the Opening drive of the first quarter. Dre Brown back deep here to receive the punt for the Senators. Uh-oh. What? Oh, no. no. Well, they tried. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. So. Going to take a timeout time to out. talk about it. And we'll take a time out as well. Back with more Seth Q Friday Night Rivals in just a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's Family of Dealerships. 9.48 to go here in the first quarter at Memorial Stadium in Springfield. Opening drive, the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders just shy of a first down and they tried to draw the Senators off down and fourth down and they called a timeout and now the Raiders will punt to Springfield High. It's punting into the wind. And that is a short kick. Look out. Takes a QND bounce. So downed at the 43 yard line. So Springfield High will start their first drive on offense with a in pretty good field position. Yeah, we, we talked about a little bit in the pregame show how, you know, everybody thinks about kicking field goals, kickoffs. It's really punting that, that can be affected here tonight. The wind is blowing out of the south, so from your TV screen, it's blowing from the left <laughs> to the right. Uh, so it, it's something maybe Springfield High can take advantage of throwing the football. Number one is the quarterback. Brody Scheffler, the junior, having a good season. From the gun, back to throw on first down. Fires it complete. Down at the 48-yard line, but 
the catch that time to Jaden Wilson. So it'll be second and four now for Springfield High. Good step up and throw there by, by Scheffler to Wilson. I, I really do think a key is keeping Scheffler upright, giving him some time in the pocket. He's got a lot of speed on the outside. If he can let his guys get downfield and make something happen, it could be a long night for Quincy Notre Dame. Second and four now for Springfield High. Scheffler pitches back. Lewis, Got look at him room. go! He might go! He no! But he down to the 20 yard line. Ball's loose. I think he was down. Oh, How about that? Armand Lee Lewis. Armand Lewis, I talked about him in the pregame. If you see him take the field, you wouldn't think he's a running back. He's a very, very stout, very powerful runner. But as you saw right there, he made one cut and came back through the backfield, and he almost pulled away from the Raiders right there. Great job to keep a hold of that football as they were reaching for it. And that is a Brant Professor Agriculture first down. Brant Professor Agriculture, one of our first down sponsors again this year. Thank you very much to them. First and 10 for Scheffler and the Senators from the 21 yard line of Quincy Notre Dame. After the big run by Lewis, they give the Lewis again. Right got flag, a got a open. hole. Look at that. Hard to bring him down. He's inside to the five yard line. They'll move the chains again. That's another Brent professional agriculture first down as the Senators enter the Roller Bros construction red zone. Take a look at this play right here. He, you could have drove a small car through that hole. Great job up front by the Senators offensive line. I think Quincy Notre Dame's in a little bit of shell shock right here. They need to take a deep breath and kind of settle in or we're going to be looking at a quick six points here by Springfield High. First and goal for Scheffler and the Senators. Give to Lewis again. Why not? Hard to bring him down. He's trying to get in. No signal. Down at the one. So it'll be second and goal. The senior, Armand Lewis. Coming right at you. Uh, he is well over 200 pounds. It's going to take five, six, seven. Armand Lewis. Armand. Yeah. Hey, oh, what up, dude? It's Armand, Armand. Lewis. Armand. <laughs> All right. Second and goal for Springfield High. Go ahead and come to the club. <laughs> Hand off to Lewis. Left side. He He's is in. in. Touchdown. And that's an Abraham Lincoln Kepler for touchdown. For the Senators, six to nothing. Great job. Don't overthink that one. He he got you down there. He's going to be tough to bring down. Really great job up front by the Springfield High offensive line. They cleared out huge holes for Lewis to run through. That's a huge first drive for Springfield High. Ben Corey will attempt the extra point for the Senators to try to make it seven to nothing. And plenty of leg there, and it is no good. Six to nothing. We'll take a break. Senators lead. Six nothing with seven of seven to go in the first quarter. Back with more from Springfield in just a minute. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. Paul Waffle, Adam Anderson, Spencer Davis. Wow, Springfield High, 7-0-7. They strike first, 6-0 after the short one-yard touchdown run by Armand Lewis, the senior. And wow, that was a pretty explosive drive. That was fast. You know, the, the big run, back-to-back -back big runs there by Lewis really catapulted. That That kind of came out. I think I'm in a little bit of shock still, too, on, on how well they marched the ball down. But great job uh, up front, especially for Springfield High. Coach Hebb has to be very excited about that. That that was very impressive. So Ben Corey will kick off. He's been busy here in the first quarter. Ball comes off the tee. You get that that wind is gusting right now. Yeah, I think you can hear it probably a little bit through our microphones. <laughs> but it's still. Really, really nice night, is all it, things considered. It really is. And that's another Bridge Care Suites kickoff. 
QND will get a chance to return it from the five. Dolman now across the 20, 25. Hurdles the tackle. Tackler, and he's down to the 34. There is a flag two, two at the 25 yard line. Yeah. Two flags. I have to imagine one, if not both, are going to be on Quincy Notre Dame here. Ball's at the 33, but it may not stay there, so we'll see. Official still talking about it. Hold up, hold up, huddle up. Dead ball foul, sideline warning against Black. That's a sideline warning against Springfield High. John Hebb, not yeah, happy, he, the head coach of the Senators. He thought there was a little extracurricular after that kickoff towards their sideline, so he is he is pretty fired up. A flag came in from the far side, too. Maybe that was, they, they decided to pick that one up. So first and 10 for Quincy Notre Dame. They trail 6-0 from their own 33-yard line. Shuckman. Hands off, right side, out to the 38-yard line. Oliver Triplett. He had a big game last week. Yeah, again, not their their starting running back. Ivan Hoon is is their big guy in the backfield, but had an injury. They talked like maybe he would play, but Triplett did very very well against Sacred Heart Griffin last weekend. So. He's the guy you have to keep an eye on. Second and six for Quincy, Notre Dame. Center showing blitz. Hand off again. Same play, triplet. Right side. Some positive yards. And right now we're going to take a look at the HSHS St. John's Children's Hospital scoring summary. Five plays. Didn't take them long. We talked about it. 57 yards. Capped by the... Lewis one yard touchdown run and I would say about 50 of those yards were by Armand Lewis himself So that was a, a I think a very big and important drive here for Springfield high to get on the board first in this matchup Third and three for the visiting Raiders Handoff once again to triplet. I think he's gonna be short again senators are fired up Why not their defense is playing well? And this, He's about a yard short, I'd say, a little more maybe. Here's a discussion with, with Coach Cornell and the QND Raiders. Your last punt went maybe 10, 15 yards because of the wind. You're closer to midfield now. Do you just try to go for it? It looks like that's what they're going to do. And they do look like they're going for it, as Adam said. Fourth and one from their 43-yard line. Comes up under center quickly to oh. Shuckman. Oh, they're still trying. I don't know see if he where got he marks, it. Yeah, see where he marks uh, forward, forward progress. progress but <laughs> from where the official came in on the far side, it did not look like he had it. They're, I don't think from where we're either. sitting, it's, they're short. But I'm sure they're going to measure just for. Let's see. Ball just looks like it's just shy of the 40. Yeah, I think they're going to be four yard, three yard line there. Here we go. Great camera work. Let's see Ooh. where they pull it tight. They are short. <laughs> so the Senator defense comes up again. Two drives, nothing doing for the Raiders. And the 4 0 Springfield Ice Senators are. Pretty excited. Why not? Yeah, up front, they have done really well. We, we talked about the offensive line. Their defensive line is playing really, really tough right now. I, I thought that was going to be an important matchup to this game for both sides, is how do the big guys do up front on both sides of the ball? QND defense will be tested here. First and 10 for Springfield High on the Raider 44-yard line. Scheffler hands off to Lewis. Gets down to the 40-yard line. And Lewis is a workhorse. Yeah, he's going to try to wear him out. Almost a bad snap there by Scheffler. He brought that one in to make sure he could get the handoff to Lewis. 
You have to keep an eye on, on Brody Scheffler, too. He is a quarterback that can run the football as well. Second and eight for Springfield High. They have the ball. They have the lead. Six to nothing after the Lewis touchdown. Scheffler looks to throw right. Does. Fires a strike. Complete down the 15-yard line. And Dick and the Senators continue to move. And the catch, Dre Brown. And that's a branch professor who holds the first down. And the Senators are inside the Roller Brothers construction red zone. Great throw by Brody Scheffler. And I'll even go as far to say if that if this game was a year ago, I don't know if Scheffler had enough confidence in him to make that kind of tight pass in that window. But great throw and catch there by, by Dre Brown. And as we mentioned, yes, into the Roller Brothers construction red zone, the Senators are again on first and ten. Scheffler hands off to Lewis. Left side doesn't find anything that time. The Raiders stop him and got a Raider down on the field, shaking up a little bit. Number 68, Aiden Brunier, the 6'1", 260-pound senior defensive tackle. Hopefully he's okay. Right now, we're going to check in with our title sponsor, SEPQ. Thanks, guys. It is week five of Friday Night Rivals, Quincy, Notre Dame, and Springfield High. Today, I am here with Courtney Bouvet from SEFQ. So, Courtney, what are some upcoming events that SEFQ has going on? Uh, so, October 3rd, we have Shoes, Brews, and Biz hosted by the local Springfield Chamber. It's going to be a great event coming out to the LRS hangar. Um, I'm going to have a booth out there, enjoy tons of horseshoes from local vendors as well as local brews. Um, October 19th, we have Spooky Trails hosted by the Y. MCA. Fantastic. So since it is Friday Night Rivals tonight, I wanted to ask you, are you an alumni of either of these schools and kind of what like do you remember from high school? I am not an alumni of either of these schools. I am an alumni of Chatham Glenwood, um, but my favorite thing about high school was actually going to the football games. Oh, that's amazing. And have you ever participated in Friday Night Rivals before? Uh, yes, for SEFQ for the last, I would say, eight or nine years. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Courtney, so much. And Seth Q, back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks to Seth Q for being our title sponsor once again this year. Seth Q, front at rivals and injured player for the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders being helped off the field. So take a look at uh, great camera work there. Look at that wind. We talked about the gust could come up, go up to 30, 40, 45 miles an hour. And that we saw that. Wind uh, was a factor on the punt yeah, that Notre the, Dame Raiders had. The kicking game. I, I watched in, in warm ups too. I, I, I don't know how much the passing game will get affected, but definitely the kicking game. And Friday Night Rivals is available streaming live on newschannel20.com and on News Channel 20's Facebook page. You can also find a link to complete game videos from this season on newschannel20.com. All right, Scheffler and the Senators now from the gun. Scheffler looks to throw. Does throw right, got a man. Oh, almost made a great catch there. Wow, number nine, Makai Newman, the intended receiver, the junior. That was a nicely thrown pass by Scheffler. Just a tough play to, tough catch to make. Yeah, uh, for Newman. great job by Newman to even get a hand up. But Ty Meyer uh, did have really good coverage on him. But Scheffler put that ball where it was either going to be Newman, Newman catching it or nobody. And that's what you want. And boy, he, he definitely does look more confident this season 326 to go here third down and 10 for Springfield High ball on the 15 of Quincy Notre Dame Scheffler rolling is he gonna throw it or keep it fires incomplete intended receiver was number eight and could not connect so Let's see what Springfield High does. Got that wind and yeah, we did watch them in warmups and they were good from 40, 45 yards. So you're from you're on the right hash. So this will be a they attempt it. We don't have Boy, this him. will be top 92. We don't have him on the roster, so we apologize in advance for not getting his name. But so this will be a this is 
Kai Reinenberger. It's up. It might. Oh, I think short. It got. I think it was short. Just short. I think it got blocked even. That ball came off of his foot very weird. So, score remains six to nothing. Springfield High as they can't make the field goal. And we'll let you know that coming up after the game tonight, watch Whose Line Is It Anyway? Followed by Inside the NFL with Bill Bilicek right here on CW23. So, be tough to make a field goal in any kind of uh, any under any circumstances tonight with that win. So, mm -hmm. Quincy Notre Dame stops the center. See what they do here. On first down, there's handoff to triplet. Good game. It's about nine, looks like. You know, Quincy Notre Dame's had a lot of success on first down. That that hasn't been their problem. Second and third down, they've really stalled out or even gone backwards against the Springfield High defense. So second and short for the Raiders. We talked about it. This is their first away game. All four of their first games were at home in Quincy. They're three and one. Shuckman from the gun. Wants it. Fires right. Complete. Makes a move. Does not get the first down. In fact, I don't know if there was any really gain on that play. The catch made by Joseph Dolman, number one. Yeah, again, no no movement there on second down. It really seems like the, the Senators kind of settle down after the first down play and, and really start to attack this Raider offense. Third and four now for the Raiders. Chuckman hands off. Mm -hmm. Look at that defense there. Whoa. Keyshawn Stop. Harris, Keyshawn Harris, the senior. Wow, what a stop there. This early penetration from the backside. Triplet barely had gotten that handoff. We take a look at the replay. He takes the handoff, but he had nowhere to go almost immediately. Again, been very impressed here in this first quarter with the Springfield High defensive line. Punt formation, the Raiders. Their own 10 yard line. See what kind of punt. Not a bad punt at all under the circumstances. Gets a, takes a Springfield high bounce. Senators will have it first and ten from the QND 44-yard line. Leading six to nothing, Springfield high. We've got a feeling tonight we might be playing a lot of game on that, <laughs> this side of the field. The, the turf might get a little worn down here on this side of the 50. Just because if... If you're behind and you're going to have to punt into this win headed to the north, it, it, it's tough. I mean, he did a better job, Joseph Dolman did, on that one to get it maybe a little bit more low-line drive than his first one. But it, it's going to be tough sledding for anybody here tonight. Def definitely will. So first and ten, Scheffler and the Senators. Thurman was in motion. Back the throw. Way overthrown down the 10 lock yard line. Thurman intended receiver. So it'll be second and 10 for Springfield High School. It looked like maybe a miscommunication between Thurman and Scheffler. Thurman was breaking towards the middle of the field, and that ball went out towards the sideline. No harm, though. We'll just settle down here for second down. Second and 10. And that wind is pretty strong. 110 go here in the first quarter. Springfield High with a good crowd as always. QND has a lot of fans as well. They travel. Yeah, they have a very uh, strong and passionate fan base. Good to see a lot of people made the long trip over here. On second down, Shuffler looking as time fires to complete the Thurman this time. Got a first down. That's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. Check that. That's not. That's Dre Brown. That's Dre Brown with the catch. Brant Professional Agriculture first down. Just some crossing routes. He sneaks in underneath the inside receiver that was going to the outside. Just 
trying to play with the eyes of these Q and D uh, defensive backfield to, to get some open guys. Let's see if they go back to Lewis here. They've uh, put the ball in the air uh, a lot here recently. On first down, and they give it to Lewis. Gets a couple, maybe. You know, in watching the Quincy Notre Dame game against SHG last weekend, I really was impressed by the defensive line for the Raiders. And Springfield High School takes a timeout. They want to talk about it with 32 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Centers have to be feeling good about this. Six to nothing. They miss the extra point, of course, but playing very, very well uh, here in the first quarter. Yeah, and I think this uh, timeout might have more have to do with keeping the wind at their back here as they're driving into the end zone. Ball on the 29-yard line of uh, QND. So Scheffler has gone to the air a little bit more on this drive than previously. And we've got a birthday to yeah, mention, we, don't we? We need to. Uh, we talked to him before the game, but happy birthday to assistant coach Neil Taylor, former Springfield Southeast, was at Sagar Griffin. We also need to give a big 94th birthday yes. shout out to his mom Phyllis. Yes, said she's at home watching. Didn't didn't come out to the game tonight, but she so usually uh, does, right? Yeah, but, usually at every game, but with the weather, he didn't know and. Happy birthday to Phyllis. Happy birthday to Phyllis indeed. Happy 94 years young and happy 60th to Neil Taylor. Great coach, great guy. Well known, well respected in this community, no doubt about it. All right. On second down, Scheffler going to keep it himself in trouble. No, throws it. Flag on the play. Thurman, the intended receiver, incomplete. Had a lot going on there. Let's see what ends up holding yeah, on Springfield High. So they'll bring that back 10 yards. So, again, they gave him a lot of time. On the offense, holding, number 55. Ten yards from the spot of the foul to play second down. As Scheffler stepped under, up into that pocket, I think that's where the hold came in. You see it. Yeah, just, yeah, it was there in the corner of the screen. But... They still have 26 seconds here to work with the wind at their back. Let's yes. see if maybe they take a one or two more downfield shots. So second and 18 right now. With 26 seconds left in the first quarter. Armand Lewis in the background. German was in motion. Scheffler in trouble. Gets away. Fires it incomplete. Did a good job just to get rid of it. So that suffer a... Loss, so third and 18 now for Springfield High. Yeah, Nolan and Earhart, number 12, came into the back, backfield fairly early. Again, they haven't got a ton of pressure on Scheffler yet, but now these last two plays, they, a little bit of pressure, and he's had to roll out and, and dump the ball. The Scheffler name, well-known, well-respected in Springfield, Illinois, and Springfield High, and great family. And some great athletes, but even better people. Third and 18 now. Lewis in the backfield. Trips right for Springfield High. High snap. Scheffler fires across oh. the middle. Hits Thurman ahead. Almost picked off. Hit Thurman's helmet. Incomplete. So it'll be fourth and 18. So, Adam, do you... You're not going to punt here, are you? Hi, you're kind of... You're in, again, no man's land. You're on your, their side of the 50. Great throw by Scheffler. Uh, Thurman's got to get his head turned around. That ball came to the right spot in between the two zone coverages. Thurman's got to turn around and almost sit down or, or throttle down a little bit to catch that football. And the Senators, you know what, could play field position here. Ben Corey, number 88, to punt. He's now, at his own 45. See what he Notre does. Notre Dame did block a punt last weekend, so... Pretty good punt. Can they stop it from going into the end zone? Oh, look at that. Senators down at about the six-yard line. So good job on the punt. Take advantage of that win. As you said, Adam Anderson, still seven seconds to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, last weekend, Quincy Notre Dame did block a punt against Sigurd Griffin. So I'm sure that's something Coach Hebb talked about all week 
to make sure because it's little things like that on special teams that can be the difference in big games like this. Q and D also had a punt return for a touchdown mm -hmm. in that game last week. Their special mm -hmm. teams talking about that. So first and ten from their own six. Very well, could be the last play of the first quarter. Keep an eye on number nine, Wyatt Mueller. Shuckman hands off right side to Triplett, Oliver Triplett. Get some positive yards. And the first quarter comes to an end. So we'll take a break. You're watching Sefkew Friday Night Rivals back with more from Memorial Stadium in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. We're ready to start the second quarter here at Memorial Stadium in Springfield. The Springfield High Senators lead Quincy Notre Dame six to nothing. So we start the second quarter and the Raiders have the ball on their own 11 yard line and they are going with the wind this quarter. The first down is Chuckman's back to throw. Got a man complete, got a first down down the sidelines. Out about the 28 yard line and Wyatt Mueller with the catch. Yeah, great job. Hey, that's the first first down here for Quincy Notre Dame. Uh, they had really had great opening plays on their at each possession, but really couldn't move the ball. It looks like they maybe made some adjustments. And again, Wyatt Mueller is a kid you have to keep an eye on all over the field. He, he threw two touchdown passes last weekend. And that's the Brant Professional Agriculture first down for Quincy Notre Dame. First and 10 from the 26. Pitch to Triplett. Oliver Triplett upended about the 28 yard line. Don't adjust your screens at home. Quincy Notre Dame is going under center. You don't see that a whole, a whole lot anymore, but uh, great pursuit there by the Senators to not let Triplett get outside. So second and eight now for QND. Their first game away from home. Triplett again. Up the middle to about the 33 yard line. Be third and four for the Raiders. And we talked about, you know, Quincy Notre Dame hasn't, hadn't left Quincy up until tonight. They're, they get to play their crosstown rival, Quincy High. So that's, and then three home games get you, you four at home. But now if you look at Springfield High, the rest of their schedule, they're going to stay in the <laughs> Springfield, the greater Springfield area. They're not going <laughs> to venture too far. Here from Memorial Stadium, they'll have a, a little trip over to the west side of town, but kind of two interesting dynamics there. Third and four. Shuckman under center. Rolling. Throws. Oh. In and out of the hands. And center receiver, Taylor Scott, the fullback. So going to bring up fourth and four in a punt situation for QND. Even on this, you take a look at the replay. I thought Shuckman could have just pulled that ball down and got the first down by himself. Uh, the Springfield High defender number 23 was was in a Tez Williams was in an awkward position there. Does he go after Shuckman or does he cover the fullback coming out of the backfield? And Talon Scott did have a step on him. Just unfortunately that ball hit off his fingertips. So Q and D in punt formation. The punt goes very very high, not very far. Takes a Q and D bounce. And down at the 37 yard line. So Springfield High will start their next drive from their own 37 yard line. They have the lead six to nothing after the Lewis touchdown run with 10 15 to go in the second quarter. And right now we're going to set it down to ABC News Channel 20 Spencer Davis for the Gruning Health and Wealth Sideline Report. Spencer? Yeah, guys, it's a uh a little windy down here, as you can tell on that blocked kick earlier on. You can see that ball still went almost 10, 15 yards in the air with the help of it. And we'll see what Springfield's offense has going into the wind now. It's harder to catch your breath looking that way for sure. Guys, back up to you. All right. Thank you, Spencer. First and 10 for the Senators. 
There's the handoff to Lewis. Three, four, five Raiders are there quickly and push Lewis back. Yeah, They've great. been stopping him of late. Yeah, great job up front. Ever since that first drive, Coach Cornell uh, maybe took his guys aside, and he's really talked to them. They have not let Armand Lewis get loose at all. They've done a tremendous job in, in bottling up. I think he's only gotten maybe two to three yards uh, in positive runs since that first drive. Quincy Notre Dame coach Jack Cornell in his seventh season. He's head coach of the Raiders. Quincy guy, former NFL guy, great beard as well. And wind is picked yeah. up. Second and 11. Thurman in motion and a whistle and a flag. Got an offside or false start there. We said Dead it. ball foul on the offense. False start. Five yard penalty. Second down. So second and 16 now after the illegal procedure penalty. Just hear that wind. We almost blow away, away here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> My headphones here. You think as the, the night went on, maybe it would die down, but I actually think it's picked up from where it was at the beginning of this game. I think you're right. Great shot of all the flags there here at Memorial Stadium. Great camera work by the men and women here. That's thank you. So second and 16 now for Scheffler. He looks to throw, looks right, fires a strike, complete the 45. Up to the 48-yard line, close to a first down. I think he's going to be a little bit short, but good reception there from Akai Newman, the junior. Great catch by Newman. Kept his eyes on that ball, and a strong throw there by Scheffler into the wind, but he secured that ball and then got upfield to get the first down here for the Senators. And that is a brand professional agriculture first down for Springfield High. Scheffler comes in at the... Going to the sideline, getting the play here. Coach Hebb's going to wear him out, running back and forth <laughs> in this, tonight. Lewis in the backfield. Thurman now in motion. Shepard hands off to Lewis. Maybe a yard, Adam, if that. Yeah, I think they'll give him a yard. They've done a, really, a lot better job tackling Armand Lewis, which... I don't know about you, Paul, but I'm glad I'm not trying to to, <laughs> to, to get out there and tackle him. But they're they're going low. He's a, he's a big body to bring down, but they've done a lot better job in tackling as this game's got on. They really have. As we said, Central State Eight Conference matchup might sound strange, but that's what it is this year. So, <laughs> considering. As we get farther near, you might see Quincy Notre Dame play a team like Moreau Forsyth in the playoffs. <laughs> Scheffler fires it and intercepted. Did he, make the catch? did he catch it? They're going to say he caught it. The interception there he for Quincy Notre did. Dame. He did. So number 26 for Quincy Notre Dame with the Todd interception. With Todd Meyer. Ooh, at the 31-yard line. So again, some either a miscommunication on the route or where they were supposed to go, but that ball sailed on Scheffler, and then, yeah, he came up with that great catch there by Meyer. That's a big turnover. Let's hopefully they can build on some momentum here. See what 7:27 left here in the second quarter. First turnover of the game. From the 31. Chuckman. Oh, that's Keeps Wyatt it. Mueller, yeah. Check that. Yes, it is Wyatt Mueller. He did that last week as well. Sometimes he was. Yeah, he's a guy. A quarterback. That, he can do it all. He can throw he the ball. About it. He can they'll move him around. Just he's he's a he's a very, very good athlete. They call him the, the Swiss Army knife of Quincy. <laughs> So you can't just think if he's back there, he's going to run the football. He had two touchdown passes last week against uh, Sager Hart Griffin. So second and six after the Mueller run. Mueller again, hands off to Meyer. Center's defense big that time. 
Great job, great read up front by Springfield High to, to come in and make that play in the backfield. Third down and six now for the look on the replay. Dame. Just came underneath the, the pulling lineman and made a play before that lineman could get him. Third down. Senator Faithful are fired up. The fans are ready. They want to stop. Shuckman. Nope. Mueller. Gonna keep it. Going wide. And he got the first down. How about that? That was a sneaky run there. It's a Brant Professor Agriculture first down for Quincy Notre Dame. Yeah, nothing special. They loaded up that left side of the line and then just snapped it to him, and he did the rest himself. Great job by Mueller to, to get on the outside, but again, good job up front to, to create a lane for him to get out wide. Did a good job turning that corner. So first and 10 ball on the 42 now for the Raiders who trail six to nothing here in the second quarter. They got the ball after the interception. Keeps it himself, does middle, look at him, up the middle, wow. Hits, runs into the official. Did he get the first down? I think he did. Yep, and he, they'll move him, the change. That's a brand professional head coach, first down. Look at this run. They're they're just, add, yeah, they're adding the extra fullback tight end types there in the backfield to give them two extra blockers there for, for Mueller, and he can do the rest himself. So... QND with the ball on the Senator 48 yard line. They found some success here with Mueller at quarterback. Look for a counter play back to his left right here. Drops it, Mueller does, and wisely just jumps on it. Fumble, so. Which but kind lost. of stinks because I think I was going to be right here. If you look at 44 <laughs> and 42 there, they're, they're pulling back to his left, left. side. But you got to take care of that football. Mueller saves it for Quincy Notre Dame, but now to be second and long. 14 for the visiting Raiders. It's a completely different look here that QND is giving Springfield High now with Mueller as their quarterback. Mueller back to throw, rolling right. Fires it, complete. Sanders pushing back, but not until he gets to the 42-yard line. Noah Alger, number 44, the big tight end. First time we called his name tonight. Yep. Great job there by Alger. I was waiting for the pass to come because a few runs, you don't want to get sucked up and just staring in the backfield, but great throw there by Mueller to, to live it to Alger. So third and six now for Quincy Notre Dame. Been a pretty quick first half. Inside of four yeah, minutes it now. It has. On third and six. With the Springfield what? High student crowd is Mueller getting loud. Keeps it himself, breaks two tackles, goes up the middle, didn't get the first down, but Certainly got enough. You think they're going to go for it here? Be surprised if they wouldn't yeah, go for it. Yeah, be wouldn't surprised you? If, if they didn't. Mueller. Stepanowski was right there in the backfield and had him wrapped up, but again, he he's a crazy good athlete and just was able to wiggle out of that tackle and not only get out of that maybe loss of one or two, but put them in a situation where they're fourth and, and two now, maybe one. Call it a fourth and a long one. How's that? <laughs> right. Under center goes Mueller. Takes it. Boy, he moves the pile. Oh, my gosh. Still going. He's, yeah, he oh almost my God, snuck almost out of there. It. Yeah. That's a Brant Professor Agriculture first down, and they moved the chains, and Wyatt Mueller is a, is a force here. They got up there and they snapped that ball quickly. I'm not sure Springfield High was totally ready to go when that happened. And you could kind of see him just kind of wiggling around in there. He almost got loose and took that one to the, the distance. Good job by the QND offensive line there as well. 
Raiders on the Senators 35 yard line now first and 10 Mueller keeps himself goes to the middle cuts back Gets about seven maybe eight yards there and on first down Not a whole lot to it here with with, with Mueller in the backfield They have the the two extra fullback tight end type guys But they're just gonna come right at you Mueller 6'2, 195 pounds Talked about him doing everything. He's a defensive back. Had a couple of picks last week. So it looks like Shuckman is back in. Shuckman is. He hands off the triplet. Nothing doing that time. QND has a lot of weapons. Especially for, a, a, again, a, a two-way school. I can't commend them enough for taking the challenge to be in the Central State 8, knowing full well you're going to be the smallest school uh, in this conference. And this is a very, very good football conference. We all know that. But they've they've played really well last weekend. They, they've played well here tonight. Third and two for Quincy Notre Dame. There's the handoff to Triplett. Cuts left. No. Nothing to it. Stop. Oh, late flag here. Late flag came in. Personal foul? Usually, no. Yeah, usually that means some extracurriculars. See if we can. This depends see. on who this is going to be on. See what they call it. Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 73 on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Fourth down. Wow. 15 so, yards. 15 yards, and that's dead ball, so it is still, it is fourth down, so. Now, if you're Coach Cornell, what do you do here? You want to play field position with a minute left. Third and 15, there's not a lot of plays in your playbook that you feel comfortable there. Uh, they're going to talk about it because we're going to take a break. Back with more Seth Q. Front Ant Rivals from Memorial Stadium in Springfield in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q. Front Ant Rivals presented by... Bob Ridings, family of dealerships. I'm Paul Wapple alongside Adam Anderson, ABC News Channel 20, Spencer Davis, our sideline reporter tonight. We've had a good game, Central State 8 battle, Quincy Notre Dame and Springfield High, six to nothing, and it's been a battle, Adam. It, it has been, it's been a, a dogfight out there. I, you know, these two offenses have been impressive for through the first four weeks, so I am a little surprised that it's, that we're looking at six nothing with just a minute left here in the, the first half. So on fourth and long, the Raiders will go for it. Nope, and that's going to be an extra five. I think they're trying to draw the Senators <laughs> off, <laughs> and it did not work. And the Senator defense, they are fired up. Now it's fourth and 22, and that wind is picking up, as you might be able to hear it at home and or wherever you're watching the, the game on your... Eight, three, phone or five, TV five, or whatever it might four, be, seven. laptop. Eight, Wherever. Five, where, you could be in five, the wind four, right now <laughs> watching it in the stands. But. That's right. So now the Raiders will punt facing fourth and a country mile. <laughs> there it is. Pretty high kick. Senators get away from it. Oh. Goes into the end zone. Thought the Raiders might be able to stop it. We'll take a break. Back with more from Memorial Stadium in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q. Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's Family of Dealerships. Second quarter action. We've got 58 seconds left. Springfield High leads. Quincy Notre Dame, the visiting Raiders, six to nothing. Springfield High will have the ball here, first and 10 from their own 20 after the Raiders punt. So Springfield High's defense has played well. The one turnover so far, Quincy Notre Dame got the interception, couldn't capitalize on it. And let's take, let's take a time here to check out the Smart Local 218 fan cam. Should be a lot of smiles tonight. Great weather, just a little breezy, and that's all right. And look at that. A lot of Springfield High fans here. Quincy Notre Dame travels well. So, smart local 218 fan cam. 
Now on first down for Scheffler. Hands off to Lewis. This time he's got a big hole. Still on he's his feet. Look at him go. 30, 35. Finally, is he br not brought down, but he's brought out of bounds. <laughs> Pushed out of bounds. The 41, and that is a brand professional agriculture first down, if I've ever seen one, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought to myself, I bet Coach Hebb's going to be pretty vanilla here. You got the lead. Uh, you're deep in your own end, but you give it to Lewis, and he breaks free right there. They're going low on him, so he's made some adjustments and just kind of picking up his feet maybe a little bit more and even got out of bounds to stop this clock further till the ball snapped. 21-yard gain, ball on the 41. The Senators want to score before halftime. Scheffler from the gun. He's got Lewis behind him. Thurman in motion. Gifts to Lewis. Left That's side. Look at a hole. He's the midfield. Clock will continue to run. About nine. We'll call it second and one. And the Senators quickly up to the line trying to catch the Raiders off guard and save time. Scheffler spikes it. 32 seconds to go in the second quarter. So you're at mid midfield. They did throw a flag here. I wonder if Springfield High wasn't set when that ball was snapped. Dead ball foul. Number 11 on, defense, on the offense. Ball start. So Five yards penalty. penalty. So second down. So second and six now for Springfield High. Armand Lewis, 11 carries, 83 yards here in the first half. Most of that have come on their first possession and here on this last possession <laughs> for the, the middle part of the first half. Quincy Notre Dame did a really great job of bottling him up. So ball on the 45. Second and six. Scheffler trips right. Lewis looking across midfield at a 48-yard line. Gets seven. He did not, just shy of the first down. No, so I think third, they're are they, I think one guy mission, I'm, waved first down, not. another didn't. So third and short is what that was. They stopped the clock, I, and I thought one was pointing and one wasn't. Okay. And now Coach Hebb is saying, yeah, pointing, what? like you said, move the chains. Did they not? Was there a miscommunication? Yeah, so it should have been first down and right there. There it is. So, so see if they put some time back on the clock, right? Well, I don't think, I think the clock started when it was snapped, so, so yeah, now it would be second down. I think everybody's a little confused here. So, so anyway, look at it. It's Brant Professor Agriculture first down for Springfield High. Yeah, they, in credit to the chains, they didn't get a full first down signal from any official. They just kind of pointed. Scheffler from the 49 of... Quincy Notre Dame rolling in trouble, just goes down at the 41. And that's a smart play, though, by Scheffler. And then at home, you might not think, but he didn't take a turnover and he didn't take an unnecessary hit right there. And I think the center's just going to let the time run out here, and they do. And we are at halftime. Springfield High leading Quincy Notre Dame six to nothing at the end of a Pretty quickly played first half at Memorial Stadium in Springfield. Ray Ramsey track and field. Paul Wapple, Adam Anderson, and Spencer Davis. Spencer Davis will be interviewing one of the coaches in just a minute as we head into halftime. A breezy night. But six, six to nothing. And, you know, in the pregame show said, oh, I said, this is going to be a lot of offense tonight, a lot, I mean, a lot of points. But, so, all right, let's go down to Spencer Davis. Spencer? Yeah, um, you know, kids came out and punched them in the mouth. We, we were able to move it right down the field, run the ball. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we really haven't had to go into our bag of tricks, which is, which is always good. So, um, you know, credit to our kids, um, but, you know, credit to their kids too because – the, the next few drives have been kind of stagnant for us, and um, we, we've got some self-inflicted wounds that we've got to take care of. Any adjustments going into the second half? Um, for sure. I, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing is just is just fixing the mental mistakes because we had several of them on the last few drives. So, 
I, I think our kids, they even came off and they were like, we're, we're doing this to ourselves. It's, it's not, you know, it's not what QND is doing to us. It's what we're doing to ourselves. All right. Thank you, coach. Hey, thank you guys. Guys, back up to you. All right. Thanks, Spencer. Thanks, Coach Heb. And, uh, Earlier tonight, Spencer Davis, busy man, had a conversation with our friends over at the Capillary Career Center. Drum majors, is your band ready? Hey guys, I'm on the sideline with our CACC educator of the game. First, I'm going to talk to Robert Farrell. And Robert, another week here on Friday Night Rivals. Another pretty nice night. Absolutely, Spencer. It's going to be a great night for football. We are excited to be here as always. You know, each and every day at CACC, we're proud to support our local high schools for their career and tech ed okay. needs. And we're proud tonight to support Springfield High here on the football field. And with that, uh, we have our educator of the week, Mr. Melvin. He always has a great group of Springfield High students in his electronics <coughs> and engineering class. Class. Well, there's your setup right there, Mr. Melvin. Tell me about Springfield High and what you're doing in the classroom. So uh, over here at uh, Capillary Career Center, I'm the Electronics and Engineering Program. Uh, we are doing electronics, uh, electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic systems for uh, seniors and juniors. So uh, I know that every year or every week, whenever we have the guys come in, they're in their uniforms, super excited, super stoked, you know, and I always wish them good luck and just, uh, you know, have, hopefully have a good game. Well, what are you looking forward to in this one? Oh man, I just I'm, I really hope they uh, you know they just bring it home, bring it home for real. All right, guys, C A C C educator of the game, back up to you. All right, thank you very much, Spencer, and the Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships halftime report is coming up next. Stay tuned. And you're watching the Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships halftime report on Friday Night Rivals. Earlier today, Seth Q presented Springfield High School with a $500 donation to say thank you for hosting tonight's Friday Night Rivals matchup. Seth Q will make a $500 donation to each Friday Night Rivals host school throughout the season for use for their general fund. Seth Q is proud to support our communities, our schools, and our students with Friday Night Rivals. And it's time for the Educator Spotlight, sponsored by the Illinois Retired Teachers Association. Let's send it down to Spencer Davis. Hey guys, I'm standing by with Bob Sheffield from Quincy, Notre Dame. He's the junior and senior high guidance counselor at Quincy, Notre Dame. Bob, great of you to join us. Thank you, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, so talk to me. This is Quincy, Notre Dame's first season in the Central State 8. What does it mean to be in such a prestigious conference? Well, we're pretty fortunate to be offered the opportunity, you know, with where we're located. Um, it was hard finding teams that would play us without us traveling three, four, five hours. So this gives us an opportunity to play quality teams, good coach teams uh, within, you know, an hour and a half, two hours of our location. And also JV, okay. build a good JV in a, a freshman program. All right, and then so also, what is the expectations of Quincy Notre Dame for their student athletes, both in the classroom and on the field? Uh, with about 75% of our students playing athletics, you know, we hold them we hold them to a high standard. Um, we want to develop leaders within the community, at school, and on the field. You know, responsible individuals who hold who are accountable for their actions. All right, and then what does it mean to be a part of Friday Night Rivals here? Uh, it's, I'm enjoying it. This is a great facility, um, great great environment, so I'm looking forward to it. And so hopefully we can put some points on the board here in the second half. So. Well, best of luck to you guys in the second half. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, guys, back up to you. All right, thank you very much, Spencer, and thank you to the Illinois Retired Teachers Association for sponsoring Educator Spotlight. You're watching the Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. The Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Right now, we're going to check in with our halftime sponsor, Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships. Thanks, guys. I am here with Jason Grishow from Bob Ridings Decatur. Jason, what's your f favorite part of Friday Night Rivals? Um, the togetherness. Uh, it's community-based, uh, family-based. Um, you know, I just love going out to the games and seeing, um, you know, kids, younger kids looking up to the uh, team that's playing. Um, families there supporting their, you know, team and their the kid that's that, that's playing. And it, it's such a, a short time frame, high school football. It's four years and their sports career and their in their life for most people unless they go on to play college, which not many of us do that. Um, and then for varsity football, it's usually just a couple years. So the heightened intensity, the spotlight on that, and the togetherness, the bonds the team and the coaches make um, and 
it's it, it can be a lifetime of impact. I mean, I'm getting juiced up just talking <laughs> to you about it. Um, it's glory days. That's why we have that phrase and talk about it. And just being a part of that is, is awesome and seeing that. I love seeing moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas up in, like, blankets and drinking their hot chocolate to support their kid and their team out there in, like, you know, mid-November. And it, so it, it's just awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jason. Bob yes. Ridings, yes. what is your favorite car you guys have on the lot right now, Indicator? Oh, that's that's a tough one. we got some pretty cool Lincolns that have just rolled in here, but I'd have to go with top of the food chain, and that's the uh, Lincoln Navigator, full-size luxury vehicle. It's uh, it, it's just straight baller. <laughs> it's a beast. So, yeah, that, that would be my pick. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for catching up with me on this Friday night. Back to you guys. Thank you. And throughout this Friday Night Rivals season, the law offices of Frederick W. Nestler and Associates will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's law offices of Frederick W. Nestler and Associates scholar athletes from Springfield High, Mia Volpert. Mia is an honor roll student and a two-time first-team All-State high school softball player committed to playing at SIU Edwardsville. She is a member of the National Honor Society and Fellowship of Christian Athletes while also volunteering as a middle school softball coach and youth softball umpire. Additionally, Mia contributes her time to the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum and the United Methodist Church. And from Quincy, Notre Dame, Wyatt Mueller. Wyatt is a three-year varsity starter and serves as the senior captain of the Quincy Notre Dame football team. He is a member of the National Honor Society and volunteers at St. Francis Church, the Knights of Columbus, and youth football camps. Wyatt enjoys spending quality time with family and friends and pursuing outdoor activities. These students are also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season, courtesy of the law offices of Frederick W. Nestler and Associates. They are proud to support and encourage exceptional student athletes across central Illinois. Congratulations to both of this week's scholar athletes from Springfield High, Mia Volper, and from QND, Wyatt Mueller. And it's time for the Educator Spotlight, sponsored by the Illinois Retired Teachers Association. So let's send it down to Spencer Davis. Spencer? Hey, thanks, guys. I'm standing by with Jeff Lightfoot, the History Department Chair here at Springfield High. And, Jeff, I've seen that you're uh, on a planning committee for some construction going on at Springfield High. Can you tell us about it? Well, the planning's done and the construction has started. So we're living through it this uh, first semester. The uh, staff, the kids are all doing great with it. It's kind of a disruption, but everybody now understands what's coming and how beautiful the building's going to be. So it's, it's fun to watch the process and I've been part of it. So you've got one kid out of high school now. You've got another one in it. What does it mean for them to go here at Springfield High? It's been a, it's been a great thing to be able to spend every day with, with my kids. I come to school and I get to see them and I, uh, I get to know their teachers. So I know maybe a little more than the most parents would get to know about uh, their students and what's going on. But I get to follow them. I get to see that, that growth throughout the, their time at school. And just be able to have that time as a parent with them is amazing. And one more thing. What is it like to be on Friday Night Rivals? That's exciting, and this is a great game so far. Hopefully uh, we can take advantage of that win and uh, do something with it second half and break this game open a little bit. All right, Jeff, great talking with you. All right, thank you. Guys, back up to you. All right, Spencer, thank you for the Illinois Retired Teachers Association for sponsoring Educator Spotlight. You're watching the Bob Ridings Family of Dealerships Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Yeah, and then talk, standing by here with Coach Cornell. And Coach Cornell, maybe not the first half you wanted. What adjustments are you guys making in the second? Yeah, I mean, we got to get more push up front. Uh, I think that they're doing a really good job of running to the football, and we just got to, you know, do what we do. Uh, control what we control, but it's a six on the ball game, so it's not like it's out of control. We just got to step up and start making some plays. All right, appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Back up to you. Thank, thank you very much, Spencer. Thanks, Coach Cornell. Right now, we're going to take a look at the first half highlights. <laughs> The best Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. Fade a throw. He's going to hurl it deep downfield, and that ball is pulled in. What a catch by Jamian Robinson. Cam Wade. With a cut. Inside the 40. This one.
Allen from 57 yards. It's to evade the rush, throws it, end zone, jump ball, what a catch! Touchdown, Sam Donovan climbs the ladder and comes down with it. That was a little bit Aaron. He, it's one-on-one, -on -one. he's got him. Got him again. He went up and caught it. Great what great a catch. catch. Great catch. Get a number on that man. Is that 19, that sophomore? Strike up the Fairfield Central Front Zone to Aquarius Shannon. 61180, a 10th grader, folks. Guy, he's a power lifter guy. A lot of their offense and one block kick deserves another, right? Still loose. Alamo Heights has it, but oh, still <laughs> out of bounds. We can get a couple of points here. Another pitch. And they've got room. Miracle on the Mississippi. You gotta be kidding. It's me. Max Bacon. <laughs> And you're watching the Bob Ridings Family Dealerships Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Back with more in a minute. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Ridings Family Dealerships. I'm Paul Wappel along with Adam Anderson. ABC News Channel 20 Spencer Davis and there's the halftime stats Adam. You know honestly it's it's a, been a pretty clean evenly matched first half. Springfield High probably has the, the time of possession lead as well. I think they had the ball a little bit more, but uh, they played they played a really well uh, first half. I think it kind of shocked QND when they came out and scored on that first drive. But like Coach Cordnell said, they're not going to panic. It's only a six nothing game. There's there's a lot of football left to be played. No doubt about that. So excited about the second half here, and that wind is still really really gusting. Yeah, but we're going to ask somebody to. To hold it. Hold the T or hold the ball on the T. As Q and D is going to kick off to start the second half. So Jack Brenner with the kick. And that is a Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Fielded at the 12, up to the 25. Push back at about the 28 yard line and Return the uh, three and Derry Brown for Springfield High. This is probably field position wise the worst they've had outside of that one drive at the end of the half. So let's see what what adjustments Coach Hebb he said you know when he talked to Spencer Davis before halftime. Hey, it was a lot of self inflicted stuff on our own end. We're not taking care of what we should be. So see what kind of adjustments him and, and Brody Scheffler have made. First and ten, ball on the 30 now for the Senators. Scheffler in the gun. Lewis in the backfield. Thurman in motion. There's the handoff to Lewis. Maybe a yard. QD is right there to stop that one. It looks like up front they've added a few more bigger bodies on the QD defensive line and, and tightened up their linebackers. But again, they did really good outside of a, f a few runs. They really have bottled up Armand Lewis pretty well. So second and nine. QND's defensive tackles. They have 260 pounds and 240. Brunier and Cam Hooner. So a couple of big guys there. From the 31. Lewis. Good, good game there to the 35, close to the 36-yard line. The third manageable for Springfield High. Quincy Notre Dame's going to have to keep an eye on, on Brody Scheffler. I know they're focused on making sure they bottle up the big Armand's Lewis, but Scheffler can pull that ball and get around to the outside. There was nobody out there on that last play. I wonder if the Springfield High coaches have seen that from the sideline. Third and four. From the 36. Back to throw is Scheffler. Fires it complete. The Newman, Makai Newman. That's a first down. And that's the Woods Basement that's Systems first down. first down for Springfield High. Yeah, great throw and catch there by Newman. Basically just got past the, the first down marker and kind of sat down and let Scheffler 
and put that ball right in his stomach. Right now, we're going to send it down to Spencer Davis for the second half Brant Professional Agriculture Field Conditions. Yeah, turf's still in good shape, guys, but uh, it, the wind has picked up a little bit more consistently. It is higher than it was in the first half, so punters and kickers alike are going to have to deal with that, maybe even quarterbacks too. Back up to you. All right, thank you very much, Spencer. Appreciate that. That wind definitely a factor. On first and 10, Lewis. Look at that hole. First down and more. 40, 35. Tripped up and down to the 30 yard line. That Armand Lewis is something. Looks like he did the first quarter tonight. Yeah, so Quincy Notre Dame has went man to man on the outside. So when the Springfield Eye receivers are releasing, they have, the defensive backfield has to watch the receiver that they're guarding. It's almost like playing basketball. I got to guard this man all the way down the field. Well, by doing that, they're not seeing what's going on behind them, which is big Armand Lewis coming down the field. And that is a, another Woods Basement Systems first down for Springfield High. Ball on the 30. Senators trying to add to their 6 nothing lead. Scheffler looks to throw, looks left. Got a man, mm. overthrew him a little bit. Tough play there. The intended receiver was Jaden Wilson, the senior. Couldn't quite connect, so wow, that wind is really, really picked up there. Yeah, and I wonder if the wind maybe is making this ball float a little bit from Scheffler. Take a look. Just kind of riot on the outskirts of his hand right there. Maybe just enough to make a little bit of an, a, an impact there, a difference. Great camera work as always, thanks to the Sefton Front Night Rivals crew. So it'll be second and ten. Early part of the third quarter. Trips right for Springfield High. Lewis, left side. Look at it's got a hole. It's about Lewis six on the, the play. Third down, so, be third and short now for Springfield High, and they're almost in in the red zone, Adam. Yep, just a battle up front between the center offensive line and the Raider defensive line. It's a key to a game we talked all night. I, I would give the slight favor to Springfield High so far tonight. 8.40. Left in the third. Lewis in the backfield. Straight man to man Shuffler. across the board. Look for Blitz. Gives to Lewis. Goes left. Got some yardage. I don't think he got enough. It's going to be interesting to see where they spot the ball. He kind of fell forward there right at the end. And, and it looks like it. they're going to move him. So that's a Woods Basement down. Systems first down. Couldn't quite tell from our vantage point. But he got, he got the first down. And they are moving those nerd, uh, Quincy Notre Dame defenders. We have now entered the Roller Brothers construction red zone. Had a great opening drive to start the game, and now a great opening drive here to start the second half. Coach Hebb has got to be happy. And like Adam said, in that Roller Brothers construction red zone once again. On first down, Shuffler rolling right, going to keep it. Got some room. Slides about the 13-yard line. Gain of about seven. Don't see too many high school quarterbacks do that, but I think that's a wise move. Yeah, it slide. is a smart move, and I'm sure out. Coach Hebb loves it because he knows he needs to have Brody Scheffler as healthy as possible. So second down and four, six yards that time for Scheffler. As we mentioned, having a good season, only thrown two interceptions, nine TD passes, and He's done well on the ground so far through four games. Springfield High trying to move to 5-0. and oh. QND 3-1 and one entering tonight's CS8 matchup. Their first road game, we talked about that. So on second and four from the 19. Lewis left side, thrown for a loss on the play. QND is right there. Jace Allensworth, the junior, number three, is there to make the stop. Yeah, he came in from his inside linebacker position. Great job and great job to tackle Lewis in the backfield, too. We know that's not an easy task to do by yourself, but 
Great job by Allensworth to get into the center backfield. So he's got third and six here. Ball on the 16. Scheffler rolling right. Fires it oh, in man. the end zone. Did he hang on? He oh, did he not. Did. The intended receiver was Thurman, and he's down. He might be shaken up a little bit. Couldn't quite hang on. Tough play there. And See the replay. This is an impressive throw by Brody Scheffler. He dropped that right into a window where Thurman could have just did not bring it in there as he went to the sideline. But a great job, great throw by Scheffler. Just unfortunate. So it looks like Springfield High will go attempt a field goal. I think in the first quarter they did have one blocked. There's the snap. Is it down the middle or not? And it is good. So nine to nothing. We'll take a break after the field goal. Back with more Friday Night Rivals in just a minute. Welcome back to SEFQ Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's Family of Dealerships. 6.07 left in the third quarter here at Memorial Stadium. Ray Ramsey track and field. And we've got a good one here. Springfield High just got a field goal on a windy night from Kai Rennenberger, number 92. And uh, he did a great job there. And Springfield High leads 9 to nothing. Yeah, he had one blocked in the first half that time he had plenty of leg on it got it up in the wind and two two score ball game which is what springfield high center fans want to hear so Rennenberger will do the kicking honors once again quincy notre dame not able to score as of this moment in time so and there is a bridge care sweeps kickoff for springfield high the five, 15, going left side. And a pretty good run there for Quincy Notre Dame, and that was Wyatt Mueller with the return. QND will start from their own 25 yard line. See if we see Mueller or Shuckman here at quarterback. Saw both in the first half. I'm assuming we'll probably see, you know, both here in the second half. Coach Heb talked about not having to go into his bag of tricks. Maybe we see some here from Coach Cornell. He talked about uh, we can get to some scores later, but some low-scoring games tonight. Well, yeah, a, so lot of, a lot of low-scoring games area. across the area. Uh, shout out to again my scorekeeper J.K. And we talked about bag of tricks. Look at this formation right here. <laughs> they move some linemen, move around. Chuckman is a quarterback. Triplet gets it now. Reverse coming this way is Joseph Dahlman. So a little bag of tricks there. <laughs> the senior Joseph Dolman gets the ball, the run, and take a look. Just a simple they, reverse there in the backfield as he took the handoff from Triplet, and that'll be enough for a first down. That's a Woods Basement Systems first down, indeed, for Q and D. So they go into their bag of tricks, and it works. Yeah, no need to panic, but. There's a lot of game left. I, Coach Cornell just wants to probably build some momentum. It feels like they've had really good first down plays and then they have just kind of faltered after that. First and 10 from the 35. Triplet gets the ball, right side, close to the 40. So, yeah, just. You putting triplet in a, a slot position there and trying to motion and maybe just give the senators a little bit different look with the motion maybe hesitate their linebackers a little bit as well something they probably talked about at halftime second and seven now for the visiting raiders shuckman back to throw as he complete the 45 trying to escape can't the catch by Gavin Dolman and Q and D says they have the first down. Let's see where they spot it. It's gonna Adam. be pretty close. Let's see what they 
first down. Yeah, they're going to give it is. to him. It's a Woods Basement Systems first down for the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders. 4.59 to go in the third quarter. On the 46, triplet. Triplet comes, goes back up the middle. Gets a couple on the play. And let's take a look. The HSHS, St. John's Children's Hospital, scoring summary. The Senators made it 9 to nothing after the field goal by the Senators. Nineberger. And yeah. that's decent drive is put together by big Lewis runs really got him down into the, the red zone second and seven Buckman throws the triplet got it got cross midfield cuts back first down into Senators territory at the 42 yard line great blocking on the outside by QND to give triplet the space he needed and that's another Woods Basement Systems first down. Great move right there to get, get the first down. But this formation with the motions, it's something that we didn't see at all in the first half. But I think by putting triplet in different spots and in motioning into a, a set position has been really advantageous here for the Raiders. Empty backfield. Shuckman looks left, throws right, complete. Another first down. It's a Woods Basement Systems First down, and this time the catch made by number three, and they mix it up. That's Jace Allensworth, the junior. Great job by Allensworth, and lowered his shoulder there to get the first down. The Notre Dame sideline is fired up right now. And that wind picks up once again, gusting. 3.09 left in the third. The pitch to triplet left side sees a hole stopped at the 28 yard line. Well, you got about a couple two right the there. Yeah. And Anna, we were talking about. So this is the biggest test, no doubt, for Springfield High so far this season. Four and oh, after tonight, they've got Jacksonville, Rochester, SHG and Chatham Glenwood. They've got a tough four yeah. games ahead of them you know you you that magic number is five to get in the playoffs and uh, you know four was an anomaly last year i don't see that happening much more who a little fun formation here by the raiders empty backfield shuckman back to throw flag on the play throws left complete to gavin dolman at the 21 let's see what the flag is i wonder if they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage they were in a different formation there, so let's see if that's what it, indeed if that's what it was, Adam. Okay. Oh no, he picked it up. He okay. No flag on the Q &D flag. Not happy about that. Right now, we're going to send it down to ABC News Channel 20 Spencer Davis for the Gruning Health and Wealth Sideline Report. Spencer. Yeah, guys, you can kind of see the offenses are starting to shift a little bit from what we saw in the first half. We're seeing Quincy Notre Dame. They're starting to throw it a little bit more. It's a little bit shorter, but as long as you keep that ball within a five to seven yard range, it's not going to sail on you. It's not going to stop midair. So I like what they're doing offensively. We'll see if they can punch it in. Appreciate that. On third and two, empty backfield. Pitch back to triplet right side. Got some senators there. Got a couple of yards, good effort there, but fourth and short. Yeah, fourth and about one, and Quincy's lived here a lot here tonight. Uh, taking a look. I yeah, he, good second effort there to keep his feet. He almost fell behind the line of scrimmage. So, Fourth and two, maybe here, Paul. What do you and, think? Yes, and I think is Mueller in? Let's Mueller see. Mueller is in at Why quarterback. Why Mueller right? to quarterback number yep. nine? They've done this. They did that in the first half at times. Fourth and two, triplet in motion. Keeps it himself. Does Mueller got the He's first got some down? Room on the outside. Fifteen, ten, cuts back inside the five. And Quincy Notre Dame is inside the Roller Brothers Construction Red Zone. 
And they also have a Woods Basement Systems first down. Great fourth down call there by the Raiders and Coach Cornell. You called it, Mueller came into that game. We knew he'd be getting the football, and he got it to the outside right here. Great job blocking by the Raider receivers to give him some room. Almost was in the end zone. They spotted at the two-yard line, so first and goal. Quincy Notre Dame, they are knocking on the door. 103 left in the third. Seven under center. Triplet hit hard. Springfield high with a good stop. Throws it for a loss of about three on the play. Yeah, great job. Keyshawn Harris was in the backfield right there almost <laughs> immediately. It's almost like he knew the snap count there from Quincy Notre Dame, but big play for the Senators. Trying to keep an eye on if Shuckman and Mueller are both in the huddle. Mueller is definitely there. Shuckman. Shuckman under. They're in the gun. Triplet fakes the triplet. Gonna He's roll gonna right throws. And now the hands. Oh, now he caught it. Is he in? He touched down. Beanie's in. Touchdown. Oh my goodness. How about that? It works out. Taylor Scott, number 42. 6-1-2-10 senior, and that's a Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown for the Raiders. So you take a look at this replay. It goes off Scott's hands right there, and then he brings it right back in. We could probably show you that again in a second. Let's get the uh, extra point attempt. Or... Looks like they're going to go for two. And that can't blame them. Nine it to six howling. game right now. <laughs> Shuckman from the gun. They're going for two, the Raiders are. Shuckman to throw, got a man open in the corner, and he caught it, and conversion is good. Joseph Dolman, wow, it's nine to eight, we're gonna take a break, back with more Sucky for that rival in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. 19 seconds left in the third quarter. Look at the replay of the touchdown pass. Yeah, this gets tipped off of Scott's hands, and we both thought it was going the other way with Springfield High, but he reeled it back in and then snuck that ball over the pylon. You know, Taylor Scott dropped a crucial third down there in the first half, redeemed himself there, and there's the two-point conversion just right inside the line. And we got ourselves a ball game. What a catch and touchdown. Like you said, just got inside the pylon and great, great camera work once again. And the ball comes off the tee. No surprise with that wind. Nine to eight is our score. Just a one point game now. As the Raiders get into the end zone. And there's a bridge care sweet kickoff. It's a squib kick. Picked up at the 24 yard line. Maybe a two-yard return there and the return that time Kale Thurman so let's see how the Senators respond here on offense yeah they had a really good drive just kind of stalled out had a big penalty that set them back on that last drive ended up with a field goal though so you still end up with points but I'm sure coach John Head would much rather have six points than three and that wind is a factor might even be a bigger factor as the game goes on so first and ten from the 27 now for Brody Scheffler he's got Lewis in the backfield Lewis left side tried to break a tackle there I think he got thrown forward for maybe a yard or so yeah but good tackle there by Talon Scott he's he gets the touchdown and now he's fired up to play a little linebacker here for the Raiders and he scores uh, and oh we're gonna take a break because that's the end of the third quarter. We'll Holy have some scores cow. in a minute. Back with more from Memorial Stadium. You're watching Sefq Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sefq Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's Family of Dealerships. We're getting ready to start the fourth quarter, and here's the St. John's Children's Hospital scoring summary: 12 plays, 75 yards, capped by the incredible catch by. Scott with five yards and it's a nine to eight game now. Thanks to HSHS St. John's Children's Hospital for that scoring summary. For Scheffler on first down, a little pitch. 
to Thurman. Left side cuts back through the middle. Good play there, and he's got a first down. Great job there by Thurman. It's technically a pass play from Scheffler to Thurman there, but uh, more like a run. He's got some moves when he can get into the open space. I thought he had a first down. It'll be... It's going to be short. Third, short. He didn't get a very favorable spot there, I thought, where he went down. So third and one now for Springfield High. Just starting the fourth quarter. Big third down here. See if the Raiders can stop the Senators. Lewis barrels his way. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. I think that's it. You're up a point. You don't go for it here. I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think. You've got he, that wind, though, yeah. that's you're going to kick into the wind. You gotta, you're telling you, your punter, keep this one low to the ground <laughs> if you can. And we talked about it last week. Quincy Notre Dame returned one for a touchdown, also blocked one against Sigurdard Griffin, so they have to be careful up front here. Number 88, Ben Corey in to punt for the Senators. He stands at his own 20. Pretty good punt, not too high. Takes a Senator's bounce. Yeah, that's a great bounce. To the 32-yard line, so that worked out well for Springfield High. Quincy Notre Dame scored last time they had the ball. Let's see what they do this time. And right now it's time for the Smart Local 218 Fan Cam. Check out the smiles of the young and young at heart. A lot of good waves. Look at that Springfield One of the High great crowd. Student sections here in Springfield. Absolutely. Football, basketball, incredible. Great, great support. Did a great halftime show too with the band and the palms the and everything. Palms. Yes, as always. And we talked about it last time we were here. This, they really did a great job renovating this uh, stadium. Field is incredible. Locker rooms, what? great, great improvements. I'm trying to figure out what happened here. Oh, they're going to say the, the ball was touched by a senator on the 37-yard line. So hmm. it, it's first and 10, Q and D. Throwing a shuckman in and out of the hands. Oh, tough one for Gavin Dolman. He usually catches those, couldn't quite hang on to it. So it'll be second and 10. Here's the replay. Good protection up front, and he had some space, too. If he brings that ball down, that would have been a huge gain for the Raiders. Second and 10 now. Q&D trails 9-8. to Doesn't really sound like a football score, does it? But, <laughs> but it is. It's been a well-played game. From the 37, triplet whistle. Yeah, he had blown the play. The official dead, had blown the play dead. Not sure. He was talking was to official? one of the side side judges. No flag, so just yeah. Maybe they weren't ready for the official. Up there. I'm not sure what was going on there. Second and ten. Triplet. No, nope, gives it back to Dolman. Joseph Dolman got some room. Crosses midfield. Look, he's got some speed to the 40. And the Senators bring him down at the 34-yard line. Big, big gain there. And there is a flat, and it's coming back. So holding 10-yard penalty against Quincy Notre Dame. See if I can find it here. But On the offense, number 74, holding. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. So same play they started this uh, half off on their first drive. Just a, a simple reverse play back to Dolman, but he got out in the open field and made a lot happen. The hold sure. back behind him, though, might have had something to do with it. So now you've got second and 20. Talking about Quincy Notre Dame from their own 29-yard line. Chuckman fires it right, complete the triplet. 30, cuts back, 35-yard line. Gets a decent amount of yards back on the play. 
Yeah, great play call there to get a big chunk of yards back. No one followed him out there, and he had quite an open lane. Good pursuit angles there by the Senators to make sure he didn't turn that into an even larger game. And the Springfield High student section getting fired up, Adam. Got to make it harder here for the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders. It's their first road game. QND, we talked about that. Third and 11. 9.23. Clock running here in the fourth. Empty backfield for Hunter Shuckman. Triplet in motion. Shuckman fakes it. Fires across open. the middle. Incomplete. Let's see if there's a flag. There is not. Center's defense comes up big. A bang bang play. Incomplete. That was a great so, mid route adjustment there by the Senator defender. He was following Triplet's motion, and when he faked it, he planted, pivoted, came back. And then good job to fight that ball off. Good defense by Springfield High. So QND and uh, butt formation. I thought Shuckman had some more room if he would have laid that ball out a little bit further towards the, the crossing sideline for his uh, wide receiver. High punt into Springfield High territory down at the 40 yard line. That's where Springfield High will start. We'll take a break. Back with more Seth Q front end rivals in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. I'm Paul Wapple along with Adam Anderson, Spencer Davis, and the Seth Q Friday Night Rivals crew. Wow, what a game here. 9 to 8, 9 01 to go in the fourth quarter. Springfield High with the ball and a one point lead on a very, very windy night. That wind is gust quite a bit. Very strong tonight. Scheffler from the 40. Pitches back to Lewis, right side. Breaks the tackle. Gets out to the 46 yard line. Gets about six. So it'll be second and four for the home team. I wonder if we'll see Quincy Notre Dame maybe tighten up in the secondary to get closer to the line of scrimmage to help slow down Armand's Lewis with that wind at their back. They know Scheffler's not really going to go that deep. But Lewis is up to 131 yards here tonight on 20 carries. And who's doing our statistics tonight? Our awesome statistician. Our main man, Doug Opperman, on the stats. Thank you, Doug, as we, always. Great job. We'd be lost without him. Yes, thank you, Doug. All about the numbers, right? There. Fresh box, there we are, there's Doug right there. Right. And the man out. of the district there, Jason Wind, walking through, get a little TV time, I'm sure he'll <laughs> love that. Take a break, time out. Back with more Seth Q Friday Night Rivals from Memorial Stadium in Springfield in just a minute. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals, presented by Bob Riding's family of dealerships. We've got 8.10 to go in the third quarter, and we want to take this moment to thank Antonio's Pizza for providing tonight's meal for the Seth Q Fernand Rivals crew. Anything goes crew right Antonio's. There. A bunch hey, of great people. Awesome. Do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to Antonio's for providing tonight's meal. Anything goes at Antonio's. Second and six now for the Senators. Sheffler back the throw in trouble. Dumps it off to Lewis right side. 45 out to the 47 yard line. Looked like a broken play there, but good job by Scheffler just to dump it off of Lewis. He looks like Lewis only got maybe a yard, maybe two at most, but better than taking a sack and then looking at third and long. So second and four. And Lewis limping a little bit is going to come off for a play. Take a look at He plays defense as well, so. We'll keep an eye on him. Lewis had a big night, so. Third and four now. Oh, oh somebody. I didn't know no if they saw yeah. for a second. They did. It's going to be 
on number 60, Isaac Alexander. The QND so, defensive line shifted. Dead ball foul on the offense. Ball start, number 60. Five-yard penalty, third down. The defensive line for Quincy Notre Dame shifted when they did that. Isaac Alexander, I think, thought the ball was being snapped, so he got a little excited there, but still very important here, third down. So Lewis, Armand Lewis, went out. He's still down here on the sideline walking around. It looks like he's going to be fine. He's maybe tweaked an ankle or a calf or something. We'll say lower leg injury. Kale Thurman in the back. A little pitch, a little back and forth. In trouble, but heck going on. Thurman's got some speed, but to the 40-yard line and Dre Brown. Yeah, Brown, yeah. Started off with Thurman, then to Brown. <laughs> So now you've got fourth down and long punting into into the wind. Issue with that one there, you could tell Scheffler was in a hurry because he had a lot of things going on pre-snap and the play clock was running down. So I think Quincy Notre Dame didn't fall for the, the kind of song and dance of, of the ball moving around. Ben Corey with the punt into that wind. Takes a QND bounce. The centers jump on it, but great field position for the Raiders. Their own 47-yard line is 6:05 to go in this one, Adam. Strap yourself in. And the National News Desk, locally covered, nationally collected. The National News Desk is America's news now. Weekday mornings at seven on CW23. 9 to 8. Quincy Notre Dame now with the ball. <coughs> Triplet. Left side. Find some room into Senator territory to the 47 yard line. Gets about six on the play. Don't need to be in a big hurry here. Ton of time. Wind at your back. Take advantage of it. Absolutely. This might be the lowest scoring game we've ever had on Friday Night Rivals. Um, we've done a lot of games. Yes, we have over back, eight, but nine years. Yeah. To be in the fourth quarter and both teams not in double digits, I don't I don't know <laughs> if that's happened much before. I think you're right about that. Inside of 530. On second and seven, empty backfield. Chuckman fires a strike complete to Pullman. Out of bounds, but first down, and that's a Grant Professional Agriculture first down after Gavin Dolman makes the touchdown, uh, check that first down catch. They're playing off Dolman a lot. I'm surprised they're giving him as much cushion with the, the type of seasons he's started off here this year. He's got to be Shuckman's number one priority on the outside. Just thought they might tighten up a little bit here as you know, we're going to be under five minutes left in the game. On first down, empty backfield for Hunter Shuckman. Check that now, Triplet. Triplet gets it right side. Centers there, maybe a yard. So second down now. 5.07, clock running. One final two report, New Berlin 35 nothing over Pittsfield. So the New Berlin Pretzels move to 5 now on the year. They are playoff eligible. Congratulations, Zuna Berlin. What a great start. Second and seven now. Triplet catches it. Hit hard. About the 40. Check that 34 yard line. So third down, maybe three. Yeah. Big play for both teams here. See these the lateral passes have, have they haven't had much luck here on the, the outside here on this drive. Springfield High is flowing very hard to the football, but you got to keep an eye on number 17 here down at the bottom of your screen, Gavin Dolman. Chuckman throws to Coleman as you talk. Three, four senators trying to bring it down and do bring See Dolman down. See where progress is. It's going to be really close to a first down. Yeah. 
first down. So that's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. That's second, I wasn't sure if he had it, but that, yeah, that second and third effort got just enough to get that first down. He didn't get it by much, and that is huge. 3:40 to go. One point game. Raiders come back in the second half. Hunter Shuckman, 6'2", 175 pound junior, looks to throw. He's got time. He's he got has, a ton of time. He's going to keep it himself. Goes out of bounds. About the 26, 27 yard line. Clock stops. He had a lot of time got, back there, but he, he was did. well covered all across the board. Great job by Springfield High, but stops the clock there. Didn't lose any yards either there on first down. Second and ten. And that wind has definitely picked up here as this game's gone. It's on. actually a little chilly in yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah. it? It's temperature has dropped a little bit. Got a funky formation here. Second and ten. Empty backfield. Shuckman goes left. Triplet. Twenty-five. Out of bounds. At the 23 yard line. Great play here by Bryce Bryant. Why I say that is there were five Quincy Notre Dame Raiders out in front of Triplet, but Bryant kind of knifed through and used a little speed that the sophomore has to get up there and make a play before Triplet was able to really get going and get a first down and maybe even more. That was a big play there. Third and six now from the 23 of Springfield High. Triplet motion. Shuckman keeps it. Goes up the middle. Little right oh, side there. Mueller Center stop. Snuck into the to take that snap. That was Wyatt Mueller. Check that. It was Wyatt Mueller. Mueller on the carry. <laughs> he snuck you. Neither one of us saw him. Fourth down and five. You know, he didn't didn't fool the Senators too much on that one either. But this is a huge fourth down. Fourth and it's, six. Obviously you're going for it. Or to, I don't know what the kicking game the Raiders have here. But I imagine you're going to let this play clock run down to one. Oh, he's going to call a timeout right now and think about it. Wow. Oh, we got a good one here. So fourth and five on the from the 22-yard line. If you were to try to kick it from here. It's a 32, 39-yard field goal. That's a long one. Wind at your back. We're unsure what, what, what Quincy has. In the kicking game. And want to let you know that tonight at 10.15 on ABC, join us for the Friday Night Rivals recap. Scores and highlights from all the important games here in Central Illinois. That's tonight at 10.15 on ABC News Channel 20. 10.15, all the scores and highlights from Central Illinois. So 2.30 to go, fourth and five from the 22. Like we said, be a 39 yard field goal and I wouldn't think you're going to try that you know and what I had noticed on the last few plays too Paul is uh, Dolman had not been out there at receiver he it looks like he is back out there now maybe they were just it was to give him a little bit of a break but we do have Wyatt Mueller in the backfield we do he can throw the ball but he is more of their running quarterback number nine Mueller at quarterback fakes the triplet Mueller the throw complete Got, the 13 yard enough. line, Jack Brenner, the senior. Have not and, called his name yet tonight. And that is a roll, they're in the Roller Brothers construction red zone, and that's also a Brant Professor Agriculture first down. It could not have come at a bigger time for QD. And now you watch that clock if you're Springfield High. 2 16, clock running. Trailing by one. There you see Jack Brenner with a huge catch huge for QND. Catch. Just a, a play action let probably gave Mueller a two-way go. Like if you can run, go. If not, dump it downfield. Mueller still in at quarterback here. Dolman wide right. Mueller's going to run. This it looks is like a run, wide yeah. left. Cuts He's the corner. Got some room. Five. Is he in? They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at about the four-yard line. I 
thought he was he was close. Yeah, three or four so, yard line. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds. But they will move the chains to Brant Professor Agriculture first down and first and goal from the they put it on the three yard line. It's about the three and a half maybe is where they got it marked. 145 to go in this one. Springfield High trying to hang on to that lead. Full house backfield here. And Mueller still in at quarterback. He's got triplet to his right. Mueller goes right. He's and in. he is in. Touchdown. It's an Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown for the Raiders. They take the lead for the first time tonight. Great drive here by Quincy Notre Dame. They really put it together. Mueller, again, we've called him the Swiss Army man here a few times tonight. Did enough right there to get in the end zone. You're going to go for two here. Let's see. The analytics would say probably, and they did not kick earlier either, so. And they will go for two. And Hunter Shuckman back in at quarterback for the two-point conversion try. Shuckman rolls right, looking for someone, looking. Jumps it across the middle. Complete, gonna, but I don't. No, I think not, they're going to short. It in. Incomplete. Well, it, yeah, it's a tight catch. Yeah. So the conversion. Conversion fails. It's 14 to 9. Quincy Notre Dame with 141 to go. Senators need a touchdown. Wow. This is been a dandy. Whew. What a great game we've had here tonight. I don't know how we're going to pick a player of the game, but <laughs> we'll worry about that when the game's over. 141 left. Springfield High with two timeouts. Quincy Notre Dame also with two timeouts. But and the, those could be used. Yeah, the biggest X, fa X factor that we're going to have here is that wind is going to be really stiff here in, in Brody Scheffler's face as I look out the window here at the press box at the American flag, and it is whipping. And that is a great point because you've got the two timeouts, but it'll be tough trying to throw a long pass. Yeah, take a look at and see so a great shot. That'll be right in the face of the Senators' offense. And have to wonder if that's why some of the scores you were talking about are lower tonight uh, across Central Illinois. Some games. So 14 to nine, the Senators have led. Led until the last, not until now. Yeah. What a what a great game this has been. Been and really really impressed with Coach Evan and the Senators. Let's see what they do here on this final drive. So obviously every play here is big from here, but this kickoff is big, and see if the Senators get a chance to return it. Jack Brenner with the Bridge Care Suites kickoff squib kick. Centers do get a chance to return it from the 15. Got a, 30, got a now 25, right 30, 35, and that's a good return for Springfield High. Decent return here to get Scheffler and the Senators a, a chance. Got to go, exactly. You got to go 65 yards. You've got 134 and a couple of timeouts. Good return there by Kim Thurman. So here we go. Been a tremendous game. Not a lot of people. I mean, turnovers. Sitting down. One, one, one turnover, yeah, turnover, and it was it was kind it was of an big. inconsequential uh, oh. interception there for for Scheffler, but Scheffler has Lewis behind him. Scheffler back to throw. Has time. Has time. Looking, rolling now. Rolling left. Dumps it and did he catch it? He, he did. He did in bounds at the forty. Excuse me, 43 yard line, and that is it's going to be a good close. game. Let's see. So it'll be second and short. He got out of bounds, did he not? Let's see. Great yeah, camera work. Look at that. Look at this. Need one foot in, of course. But off his finger. Look at that. Oh my! Great job. Great camera work by our crew too. And what a catch! Look at he had it and then oh almost my. dropped it. Second and one. Scheffler rolling right. 
fires it. Sideline, 49 complete, the 49-yard line of Quincy Notre Dame. And they are mixing it up, Makai Newman. And that's a Woods, uh, check that, Grant Professor Agriculture, first down. Great job by Scheffler. Coach Hebb's got to, you know, be careful, and so does Scheffler. You don't want a bunch of deep routes because that ball will hang up there in this wind. But offensive line is doing a great job of protecting him, too. He's had plenty of time these last two throws to look downfield and make something happen. Kind of like the uh, the play calling there for Springfield High. So, But they still have to go 49 yards. They've got a minute 19 and two timeouts. Scheffler, that wind is picked up again. Scheffler rolling, looking, looking. Fires at left sideline. Tip. He took a Tip, late And there's hit. a flag. So I think we're going to get roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. 42. Oh, my goodness. That is a tough, tough. Five yard, 15 yard that penalty. That is a huge penalty. In Quincy and Notre Dame. To go back to the throw, you and I both saw it from where we were sitting. If there's no wind, that ball might hit Makai Newman in stride. But the wind just hung that ball up in the air another half second longer before it was almost intercepted by Quincy Notre Dame. So now, with the personal foul, let's take a look at the HSHS St. John's Children's Hospital scoring summary. 11 plays, 52 yards. Mueller with the three yard touchdown run for QND to put them ahead. And they lead it 14 to nine. 112 left, 34 yard line. First and 10 after the roughing the passer penalty. Scheffler in the gun. Man -man He's rolling again. He fires it. Oh, oh, had his man. Little maybe too much on it. Jaden Wilson, the senior, could not hang on. Had him in stride. It was a great play call by Coach Ebb. Roll left. Had enough room to plant his feet, flip his hips, and he delivered a strike there. You got to make that play if you're Springfield High, if you want to win a game like this. 108 left, second and 10. Holy smokes. This is what high school football is all about. This is fun. Scheffler's going to have to hurry. He's only going to end up with about eight seconds when he breaks his huddle to get this ball snapped. Don't want a penalty, like you said. Two on the clock. That's it off. Scheffler throws left. Got Thurman. Out of bounds. Clock stops about the 22-yard line. And that's a brand of professional agriculture first down. Plenty of time now if you're Springfield High. The great, ball on the 22. Great blitz pickup here by Armand Lewis to give Scheffler enough time to get that football outside to Thurman. 103 left, Springfield High trailing, trying to stay unbeaten to move to 5-0. and Both teams still have two timeouts available too. Haven't had to worry about them here yet, but still two timeouts left for both football teams. The Senators, it has worked for them on this drive through the air. Let's see if they continue to do that with 103 left. Straight man to man. Armand Lewis in the back. The Shepherd's going to throw. Now let's see. Rolling got a right. Man open the middle. He's looking for a man. Got plenty of time. Dumps it. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Good play there because didn't want to lose any yardage. Clock stops. Seven and ten from the twenty-one. He, he had a man for a second over the middle. Maybe with no wind, he does try to throw that. But bro, he's being smart with his decisions. He definitely is, and that Raider defense, they need a big play here. I don't know if there's many people sitting down wow. here in Memorial Stadium right now. I think they are left standing, both sides. And the players for the Senators say, hey, let's get fired up, and that crowd is fired up. The crowd, the fans have moved to this end of the field where the Senators are trying to score. 56 seconds. Second and 10, some movement, it and a flag. Again. This is huge. Who is this on? It's going to be on Springfield High. The Raider defensive line shifted again, and it got number 60 for the second time here tonight. Isaac Alexander sees the Dead movement ball foul. moved. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Second and 15. That's a huge penalty, big penalty against 
Springfield High ball now at the 26. You might not think it is a lot, but in a, it, it, at this under point, a minute yes. left, it's a huge penalty. And that win is not died down at all. Centers have to get into the end zone. Trying to stay undefeated. Off to their best start in 14 years. Scheffler fires at the Thurman. Oh. Can't hang on at the 20-yard line. Third and 15. Woo. Dre Brown's got to make that catch right there. If you want to, again, win tight ball games against very, very good football teams, you have to make catches like that. Sheffler put it there. Everybody's taking a deep breath right here. Third and 15, obviously four down territory, but he got that wind at you, running right at you. QND, they want to stop here. From the 26, Scheffler, the junior, rolls right, fires it across the middle, oh, almost great picked job. up. Good defense there by Dolman, number 17. Gavin Dolman with a huge stop. He got that hand up right at the last second. I actually thought it was a great read and throw there for Scheffler. But Dolman got his, his big hand up there and batted that one down. So fourth and 15. Obviously, this is the ball game. Here, Springfield High has to convert. Can I, yeah. Have to get to the 11. And the centers take a timeout. I think that's what I would have done as well to talk about it. Take a deep breath, get a little water, talk about what we want to do here. Biggest play of the night. Maybe. And again, we'll have, after the end of this one, the SEFCU Champions Trophy to the winning team and the Orthopedic Center of Illinois player of the game. Maybe do a little Whew. Mother Nature dance to hope the win <laughs> will die down for one play for wow. you. Wow. That's what you have to think about, too, is you don't need to be in the end zone. You just need a first down to, to, to live another day. You've got a timeout left. But that first down, obviously, 15 yards. Got to get to the 11, almost to the 11-yard line for the first down. So if you're QND, Adam, you're going to blitz here? You're going to play prevent? I'm probably going to hang back. Um... I know they've been switching up between some man and zone here at the at the end of this drive because man to man just was not working for them. But at this point, I would I would play back. I would tell my two safeties to to stand at the first down. Don't let anybody behind you, and keep everything in front. Here we go. Will Scheffler run it if he gets the lane? Pressure's on. Scheffler says go go. Is he going to try to run? He's, He's going to try, try to run it. I need to stop. Stopped at the 18. I thought he might have had enough room to get it, but short and QND will take over. He was trying Shepherd's to. down. Yeah, I think he just, just probably got the wind knocked out of him. Here, yeah. Yes. He was trying to direct a little traffic to Thurman and Brown. I don't. I think Thurman kind of lost where he was at on the field and didn't realize he was not past the first down six. But miscommunication up front to start with. They had a free defender go. And then he tried to do it by himself, but got hit. Ball did pop loose. He hit the ground. So he hit the ground, but I thought he had a, enough to room to get the first down, but did not. And center's only one timeout. Scheffler's shaking up. Hit, hit the ground hard on that play. Yeah. Had a had a good game. I think it was Jude Larson who came behind him and put Coach Hebb's down. Like, hey, you played great. There's nothing to hang your hat about this. Quincy Notre Dame is a really, really good football team. So Quincy Notre Dame centers can only stop the clock once. They go into victory formation, take a knee. Yeah. Probably, probably run one more, have to run one more play, and that'll do it. Wow, what a what a great game. Well played on both sides, both teams. Yeah, if, if I'm Quincy Notre Dame and Coach Cornell, I'm going to be fired up, but I'm also going to feel incredibly lucky because I, I don't think they were fully prepared or maybe ready to go when, when they got off the bus. Springfield High came out hot. They sure did. And let's see. Now they don't have to run a play. That's it. 
So that's the final. Quincy Notre Dame moves to four and one. Springfield High falls to four and one. Their first loss of the season, 14 to nine. Our final score from Memorial Stadium in Springfield, and what a game this was! Yeah. Wow, both teams played hard, well played. Doesn't get much better than that. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back with this FQ Front Night Rivals trophy presentation and the player of the game presentation as well. Stay with us. Here are tonight's Scouting America Scouts of the Week. Ben Cleburne is the Senior Patrol Leader for Troop 13 in Springfield. He has also served as Assistant Senior Patrol Leader and Scribe. He's a member of the Order of the Arrow. Ben plays soccer and tennis for the Springfield High Senators. Congratulations to tonight's Scouting America Scouts of the Week. All right. 14 to 9, the final Quincy Notre Dame over Springfield High. And we're gonna we're gonna have the Sefkew Friday Night Rival Champions Trophy and the player of the game in a minute. What a night, Adam. Yeah, what a night. Springfield High came out firing all cylinders, held the lead for 95% of this football game tonight. But great job by the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders, their first time here on Friday Night Rivals. I was impressed with what they did in the second half. The adjustments that they made, didn't really panic, and they did a great job and, and came out with a big victory here tonight. Boy, they sure did, and we talked about it. No rain tonight, but that wind was gusting all night, still is, and amazing we saw some field goals on a night like tonight, but it was it really was a well-played game by both teams, and great, great, uh, great game to watch. Yeah, great game. Unfortunate for Coach Hev and the Springfield High Senators. They played their hearts out, just came up, about 18 yards short from, from taking a lead in this football game there in the end. Pretty amazing. And right now we're going to tell you who tonight's player of the game brought to you by the Orthopedic Center of Illinois is. And it is number nine. Wyatt Mueller, the, the, the Swiss Army man himself, came in at quarterback. A little bit of a running back. Had a huge fourth down completion uh, to, to keep their last drive alive and then carried it into the end zone. Had over 70 yards rushing tonight. Great job by, by number nine, Wyatt Mueller, and congratulations to Quincy Notre Dame. Yes, congratulations to Wyatt Mueller being the Orthopedic Center of Illinois Player of the Game. He did a lot tonight with a huge factor in this one we talked about. So 14-9, to nine, Quincy Notre Dame over Springfield High. And Spencer Davis is going to be presenting the trophy to Wyatt Mueller. And let's go down to Spencer Davis. Spencer? Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm standing by with Wyatt Mueller, our player of the game. Wyatt, this is yours, first off. You can take Thank it. You. Yeah. 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 With the game-winning touchdown, obviously you guys didn't score in that first half, but you put up 14 in the second, took the win here on the road. How does it feel, especially in your brand-new conference? Yes, sir. I mean, it feels great. You know, we've been grinding all offseason for this. We knew that this was going to be a statement game, bigger than last week, and luckily we were able to make it win this game, and I'm nothing without my O-line. They gave me the push to get in there. I'm nothing without my receivers. I'm nothing without anybody, so I got to thank them. All right, Coach. We talked at halftime, and you said you're going to make some adjustments, and those adjustments worked. Well, I think these guys understood what they had to do to win this game. They had to get some more push. They had to keep playing together, and I think they did that. I think they showed the type of resilience that it takes to be a championship-level team. I'm very proud of the way that we played in the second half. You may be the smallest school in this conference, but you are at the top right now of the CSA West. How's that feel? We're on the next, man. We're on the next. All right. Well, we got one more thing for you guys. Enjoy the victory. Yeah! Congratulations to, to the Quincy Notre Dame Raiders. They take home the SefQ Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. All right. Our next SefQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by Rob Riding's Family Dealerships, will bring you Week Six. Week six. We'll be in Mount Zion next Friday as the Braves take on the Muhammad Seymour Bulldogs. That's next Friday night right here on CW23. Adam Anderson, it was a great game, great camera work, great teamwork, everything tonight. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be out here. A beautiful high school football game. You couldn't ask for much more. All right. Well, for Adam Anderson and Spencer Davis and the whole Friday Night Rivals crew, good night from Springfield. We'll see you next week.